main speaking event with Heinz, his topic today, Walls Falling Down All Around Our World. Let me tell you about Heinz and his topic first. Heinz was born in Germany and has been in Canada since 1986. He is actively involved in the consumer survivor community through presentations, activism, and many other forms of engagement. Part of his activism is through his songwriting and performing to raise awareness about mental health, addiction, and poverty, especially the issue of stigma. Addressing stigma and discrimination faced by people who have difficulties and challenges overcoming the barriers of mental health, addiction, and poverty, the sting of discrimination is constantly felt, the unwillingness of official government institutions to provide for the basic determinants of health and what each individual can do to challenge this. So please come up. The forum is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you a little bit. Oh, we have to first. Oh, is that good? Loud. No, it should be fine. So one of the things is I've been working within the system and around the system for years. Then uh, when we look at each other, we all face something when you go on, like myself, so getting your old age pension, then something starts, which is called ageism. It's about age, it's about how actually we are discriminated against, we have longer ways to go, we have other ways to go to get things done. And that is one of the little problems when you get older. You have to m fill out more paperwork and more paperwork, so. But we are getting to that, so I like people, and we can have the second slide. To re respect the privacy of everyone in here, of all the people, it's okay to share main ideas we discussed today, but it's like, keep it to yourself. What's the, what is in here stays in here. I do that with a lot of uh, psychiatric survivors, uh, presentations like this, and very often when they talk afterwards, you have a little problem. We want to listen, respect that, what other people's opinions and uh, perspective and perceptions are. One person talks at a time. And is there anything else? That's a question mark. Then very often then from the audience come in actually suggestions how we can have this kind of conversation a little bit better, like uh, Sometimes I use a speaking stick or I use actually a stone, <laughs> a speaking stone to go around that only one person at a time talks. We can have the next slide. So we are ready, let's go. Next one. A lot of people don't know what really encompasses mental health. And we are looking at a balance in all parts of life. And it's not just physically. When we get older, it's getting a little bit more difficult physically. But we need to find a balance. Socially, it's the same kind of way. Where do I go? What do I do? How do I engage with other people? It's the same kind of thing. Always a problem. Then health. We always have our little tiny issues. And sometimes these issues get really, really in, in the foreground. And that's really difficult. Then mentally, yeah, when uh, you get older, Alzheimer's and all other kinds of uh, stuff is looking at you. And maybe it says, no, I'm not going there. But you are preparing yourself that you, when you have that challenge, that mental challenge, to actually fight it or get a little bit better ahead. Occupationally, yeah, a lot of people had jobs in their lives. I had jobs as well, lots of them. 
some more were fun, but then it comes, occupation is not only the job you have, but it's also the leisure time you spend. So you need to find a balance between both of them. And that helps actually to keep somebody really uh, grounded. Emotionally, it's the same kind. Sometimes we go to rough times and always when you have a friend or when you have somebody to talk to or like here a group to talk to, you're getting a little bit better than you can actually really reflect emotionally. Intellectually as well, a lot of people learn different kind of ways. Uh, when I have interest in something, then I go out and find out anything. It's the same like today here, we heard, oh, if I don't know, I Google and I figure out that's that. So that would be actually the means intellectually to move forward. Then spiritually, this is an example of that, to cre create life's balance. You need something where you can go and spiritually actually work with. And financially, some people struggle. Some people struggle very hard. And I see that in my, in my uh, building uh, where a lot of people who have mental health problems, addiction problems live, who get very minimal income. So they need a balance as well. They need to know where to spend the money and where not. And that is very, very often very difficult for them. How do you find balance in your life? And that is a question to you guys out here. How do you find balance? Does this here give you a little balance in your life? It's, a, it's an open question if you... Good. Yeah, maybe I go a little bit further. Yeah, I was going to mention to you that this is not what happens normally is you give your speech okay. and then people will come up and give their talks, their questions Later. afterwards. Okay. 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 Let's do the next one. One in five Canadians will experience a form of mental illness at some point in their life, like very often here and there people deal with depression and there are ways to deal with that and there are ways to get over that. Get the next one. How does stigma feel? Have you experienced stigma or something like that? And I give you a little bit an example and that's on the next one. Very often we get negative attitudes in form of prejudice, negative responses in form of discrimination. And sometimes it's obvious, but sometimes it's very, very hidden. Stigma means th thinking actually less of a person, what a person really is, because of his or her condition. In mental, uh, when you relate that to mental health, people have a condition, they call themselves schizophrenic. That means they go and put their label out there and that the reaction through comes through that, that people think less of that person and the person may be actually a really kind, good person and does a lot of good things. Stigma can make a person feel unwanted and, and shamed. Very often as well, we see, uh, as I sang, we see people in the gutter, people begging on the street, and they experience stigma as well. Then very often they, they don't get a helping hand. Then people are just walk by go work or this and this and we don't know what is really in the mind of that person and why that person sits there on the corner and backs. We need to question that. Why? 
And very often the why is really very, very difficult. Let's just go one more. Yeah. So stigma, when somebody has a mental health problem, he has actually a second problem and a second illness. And that second illness is stigma. He has not just mental health as an illness, he has the stigma as an illness attached. So it's a second illness. It's often harder to deal actually with the stigma than deal with the illness itself, with the mental health problem. And it stops people from getting help very, very often. Like basically when I go uh, downtown Toronto and I talk to people, hmm, when they are begging or when they want something to eat. Usually I offer, okay, let's go to McDonald's or somewhere and have something to eat. McDonald's is certainly not really very healthy, but... And very often you say, no, or give me the money. No. It's much, much better to go and give them the actual what they asked for, not money, but are you hungry? Yo, then let's go, I get you something. So you need to see really people stop from getting help. In addiction it's completely different but it stays actually the same. So we all have to be a little bit more conscious around what we give people when they are begging or when they ask for something. Next one. Very interesting. Treat everyone with respect. The beggar on the street may have been a banker in their previous life, but he ends up on the street. We don't know the story of people. And that is like very often the case. Be warm, caring, non-judgmental, I see that all the time in Parkdale, where, where I live. It's, it's really, you, you cannot judge people by how they walk around. And they are, there are very many people with a really good core, but you need to bring that out of people. And when you judge them, then that doesn't happen. When you see stigma or when uh, we get that, like when I deal with government, uh, <laughs> we are, oh yeah, you are an old man. No, I'm not an old man. I know what I want. So I challenge the stigma. I challenge actually a preconception who is there very often uh, with people in authority who want to put you, this is your place. No, it's not. My place is the place I choose. And you cannot put me in a corner or something like this, which you try to do with stigma. What Language watching, very often, we don't recognize really how we stigmatize. We do it ourselves. It's not conscious. So that's why very often I question myself when I talk to somebody, did I do that right? Did I not offend? Did I not push somebody in the corner? Then mental health and stigma, there are facts. I present some of them, but there are a lot more. And there's always the way to inform yourself, like Google or other things, but really look at that, what you get there, to get actually a really good information. Very often it's uh, not that good information. And raising awareness around mental health. Very often, and stigma, very often if you take like basically a leadership role or a role in showing how to do it, other people will do it in the same kind of way. And that's why, that's how we all can raise like basically awareness and people actually 
learn by looking at others who do it differently or do it a certain kind of way. So that is always a really good way. So we come in now to the next slide. We need to share our resources and information with other individuals and groups like I do it right now, here, talking to you. You can support mental health organizations as volunteer or donor. Very often, volunteering I like better than to donate, uh, but when you do, uh, volunteer, you donate as well your time, and that is really important. And keep in mind the following walls we're facing. And now that comes to the next slide. <coughs> These are walls, and we need to have some walls broken down all around the world. And we can go to the next one. This is just to make that a little bit visible. The medical model tells you about a condition, but very often looks only at the medical, but don't look at the whole person. So that's why we need to challenge that. Professionalism, there's an explanation for everything, for every why people treat other people this way or not. And we need to challenge that as well. Uh, authority or a, prof a professional tells you so and so. No. Question that. Look always behind it and try to actually see what is really the core message or the core thing you want to get at. The wall of a building. During COVID, a lot of people were locked down. We need to look always outside the walls of our building. We cannot lock ourselves in. We need to look what's going out on the outside, on what's going on, and how we can deal with that, and how we can get involved. We have in ourselves hidden very often through or upbringing through traditions, through other things, really some stigma and prejudice who sticks in ourselves. We need to reflect to figure out what is there and what is not there. And I think that is a challenge everybody has. And the wall of charity. I see so much charity, it's, it's really great. And I love to give, but I want to know where that goes, what I'm giving. Then some charities, they spend like 60% for administration, and then only 40% go to the people to do something good. So I question that automatically when they ask for money or something like this. And I think that's the right thing to do. And then, basically, the last slide. Thank you. Yeah.
Oh. 